root beer break. Uh, come on, load up. Oh, dang. Hey, how is everybody doing today? It is great to be back here on YouTube talking to my friends. Uh, as many of you know, my wife has had knee replacement surgery several months ago and has run into complications with that knee surgery. And uh, I did not make any video, I have not made any videos for about three months now because I needed to dedicate that time to her. Now she has gotten better. Uh, she's developed a condition called drop put uh, where her ankle no longer works after the surgery. So she traded a painful knee for a knee that doesn't hurt, but an ankle that doesn't work. Uh, so anyway, we're, we're hoping that will uh, come back over time. Doctor tells us that it, there's probably some nerve damage uh, from the surgery that will correct itself. So we're keeping our fingers crossed. And all of you that have been sending us prayers and well wishes and, and uh, telling us your stories of, of the same situation or no situation, uh, successful knee surgery, bad knee surgery. I want to thank you all from the bottom of my heart because this has been, uh, uh, it's, uh, you know, it's not a deadly situation, obviously, but we are older folks and things like this uh, get more critical with age as uh, you older folks know and you younger ones will find out. But anyway, thank everybody for everything. And uh, what I've got for us today is something new on the Battleship Texas. I, you know, there's videos out there everywhere of the Battleship Texas in dry dock. Uh, for a long while before she went to dry dock, about two years before she went to dry dock, I was the only one doing update videos on her. Uh, after she's gone to dry dock, you can find them a dime a dozen everywhere. So. I'm going to try to approach all my videos from a different angle than just flying over the Battleship Texas and giving you what you can see in multiple other videos. So one of my thoughts about the Battleship Texas was how much, if you discount the steel that's being put back onto her and just subtract the steel that's being taken off of her, how much of her total body or total tonnage or total weight do you think she's losing? So I put out a survey uh, because I have no idea, but I was curious. I was curious what everybody else thought. So I put out a survey asking this question. Disregarding the new steel going on to the Battleship Texas, how much of her total weight do you think is being lost? Now I've seen the scrap piles and uh, I did take the uh, uh, dry dock tour, uh, which is where I saw the scrap piles, but everybody has seen all the steel missing from her side in videos and photos. So uh, the options I gave in this questionnaire was less than 1%, 1 to 3%, 3 to 5%, or greater than 5%. Now, the result kind of amazed me. We had uh, exactly 100 votes. I wish there had been more, but, you know, you get what you get, and I'm happy with that. So the results were surprising to me. I was thinking she was losing less than 1% of her body weight. And like I said, we don't know. We still don't know. This is just everybody's guesses. We don't know. I'm sure the engineers know, but we have not seen that information published anywhere. Now, the hole that's being replaced, the outer hole being replaced, when, we t when I took the uh, uh, dry dock tour, I believe they said that original steel was five-eighths of an inch thick. I could be wrong. Uh, there is no armor that I'm aware of being replaced. There would be no reason to go through the expense of replacing armor. Uh, but the five-eighths inch steel on the outer hull is obviously still extremely heavy. So, like I say, I thought it would be less than 1% of her total weight because there are some armored places on that ship, a lot of armored places on that ship, that weigh an extreme amount of money, oh, extreme amount of money, huh. extreme amount of weight. Um, and trying to armor the hull of a ship would be uh, really impossible, in my opinion, due to the fact that of the weight that it would uh, 
add to the ship, thereby slowing her down in the water. And if you look at this Japanese piece of armor that was pierced by an American shell, 26 inches thick, you can tell that uh, uh, armor under certain conditions is going to help. Armor under a direct hit, which is what the hole would be receiving, not gonna help. So there's no sense in adding all that weight, all that expense, all that time to the outer hole. Anyway, on the questionnaire, what we got is 9% uh, saying 1% of her total mass was lost. One to 3% got 22% people thinking that. Three to 5%. 29% of people think that. More than 5%, 40% of people think that. Now, I was surprised by that. Maybe you are too. Uh, I would really like to hear from the engineers. I've sent off an email to see if they even have that information and have not received a response yet. Now, earlier today, I, I just want to mention this real quick. You know, I, I, I always uh, have said that uh, I don't do YouTube for money. Uh, if I can make some money to help uh, offset expenses, then I would like to do that. But I'm not looking to get rich. I still hold a full-time job. I will always hold a full-time job as long as I'm physically able to work because I feel like uh, somebody's paying me to exercise, more or less. So as long as I can, I will. But uh, any donations anybody's willing to give me on, on YouTube, even if it's just a like, as a matter of fact, click that like and subscribe. But uh, down in the description box, you'll find donation areas for uh, the Root Beer Fund to help with video production. And I've got a squirrel outside that I, that I feed. His name is Winchester McGee. And I, I use him in some videos and some I don't. Uh, so if you want to donate to his pecan fund, that would be appreciated too. Now I guarantee you, if you donate some money, Whatever you donate it to, whether it be the Root Beer Fund, Production Fund, or Winchester McGee Fund, that's where that money's going. So I met with a subscriber today uh, uh, at lunch. He bought me lunch. Thank you, uh, Boonhauer. Yeah, that's, that's his name, Boonhauer. Only he doesn't talk like, like, like that. <laughs> Uh, we met at uh, Ray's Italian Kitchen. Now, Ray's Italian Kitchen, that's their magnetic business card. It's kind of cool. It's shaped like a pizza, but they got so much more than pizza. It's an Italian restaurant, so obviously they have more than pizza. They are located at 1303 NASA Parkway, Houston, Texas, really close to League City. Phone number is 281-480-0700. They are, uh, mo like most restaurants, you can eat in or on the patio or order to go home. Now, I had uh, lasagna when I was there. It was more than good, more than good. The place is nice and clean. The folks are really friendly. So if you're ever uh, in South Houston near the League City area, go to Ray's Italian Restaurant. Now, this is an unpaid promotion. They're not paying me to say this. I'm saying it because you guys are my friends. And I want my friends to eat at the best places they can, just like I want to eat at the best places I can. That's the only reason I mention Ray's Italian Kitchen. Because I want you guys to enjoy life as much as I try to enjoy life. Uh, now, Boomhauer, while we were there, he donated me some money to the Root Beer Fund. Boomhauer, I really, really appreciate that. And uh, that's going to go on some root beer today. He also gave me this, which I've never seen before. It is Metal Earth Premium Series, the Willis Overland Jeep model. Now, inside here is metal pieces that you pull apart, takes no glue, and you build yourself a tiny little Jeep. Never seen it before. Look very forward to doing it. Once again, Boomhauer, I appreciate this too. I may make a little video on this and uh, just speed it up and, and you know, turn hours worth of work into five minutes or so. I may do that. But anyway, I appreciate this and I appreciate the donation, Boomhauer. 
Now, let's talk about the Battleship Texas. While I was on the dry dock tour, uh, I was taking pictures of the Battleship just like everybody else. Now, when you take that tour, they will email you, and I believe they're still doing that, doing that tour for uh, some amount of time, but they will email you several forms you need to sign. One of them is a form that uh, says you will not take video. Uh, now, I've seen uh, other YouTubers use video that they took. I uh, honored my agreement with them. I did not take any video. I did take some uh, photographs. Photographs are welcome. I don't really understand the, uh, the need to have folks not take video. There are cameras all around the uh, shipyard, obviously, for, I'm sure, various reasons, theft, security, safety, insurance purposes, all kinds of purposes. Uh, so there, it's not like there's no cameras there. They're everywhere. It's just we couldn't take any video. Now, the only reason I personally can figure for that is audio. Photos and uh, video are pretty much the same until you add audio to video. What they would not want to be heard, I, I have no idea. I mean, this was just a tour talking about the ship. So, I, you know, I may be totally off base with that guess, but it's the only difference between video and, and photos. I mean, if you do burst videos, uh, or if you do burst photos, link them together, you've got a video. So, I don't know, I don't know. But I stuck to my agreement. I did not do any video, but I did take some uh, photos. And photo after I got home, started looking at them, the photos I found most interesting, and maybe because I'd seen hundreds of uh, photos of the ship already, uh, the photos I found most interesting were the photos I took of the scrap pile. Now, let's talk about that scrap pile. I'll go through them uh, and point out the things that I see as fast as I can. I know people don't like to spend a lot of time watching a video, and neither do I. Uh, so I'm going to go through this as fast as I can, folks. All right, so in photograph number one, what we've got here right up front is one of the valves that were used to flood the, the uh, torpedo blisters. You can see in the background right here, there is a second one. And what you can't see in this photograph is that there is a third one back there. Uh, that's in a following photograph. Now these valves uh, were opened up to flood the, the uh, torpedo blisters to help balance out the ship in, in the event that she had taken damage and was listing. But uh, as many of you know, on D-Day, the captain of the ship flooded the torpedo blister to help the 14-inch guns go inland a few more miles. Uh, as the fat electrician would call it, and I think he's right. It's the gangster lean. Take some nerve to gangster lean a battleship. Anyway, let's move on. Then in this photograph, you'll also see this archway piece right here. Now this is a beautiful piece of steel. I don't know where it came from, uh, but it's a beautiful piece of steel. And right to the left of that, you'll see another piece that's got uh, Looks like five holes in it, like the, the number five on a die. That also is a beautiful piece of steel. There is another archway laying on the ground here. Uh, these are all beautiful pieces of steel. Now they did say that these are going to be cleaned up, cut up, and sold as uh, souvenirs to get donations for the ship uh, for whatever she needs in the future. These valves, I wish, some company would buy them and restore them and put one on display at the ship. I, I don't think they're going to replace those. They're, well, I, they're not going to replace those in the torpedo blisters with new ones anyway. They may uh, clean these up and put them back on, but I don't think they're going to. I think they're, the uh, torpedo blisters are going to be put back together without these included. Here again, you can see that archway that is, like I say, that's just a beautiful archway, cleaned up, painted, and put somewhere, or just conditioned to stop the rusting, rusting process and put it uh, somewhere that could support that kind of weight on display, either at the ship or in a museum, wherever, I don't know, but that's a beautiful piece of steel. 
Now the torpedo blister flood valves, right here you can see that first one in the last photograph. This is the second one, and here is the third one I was talking about. Now I do not know how many valves each blister had on it. Uh, I saw other valves besides these three out there, but uh, I don't know if there were three per side, four per side, I don't know. Once again, the flood valves. Uh, this is where you can start to see some of the uh, hull steel right there on pallets waiting to be moved out. Now, as I said earlier, I believe those are five eighths of an inch thick. Uh, so that's a lot of weight on one pallet right there. You can see more pallets of the hull steel. Uh, this too was going to be cleaned up, especially the sections like this one right here with the rivets. They were gonna cut those up, clean them up, uh, finish them up so they'd stop the rusting process and sell them in order to gain uh, donations for the ship. And also back here, you can see another of the flood valves in the background there. A lot more of the hull steel on pallets waiting to be taken wherever it's gonna be taken. And as you can see, there are one, two, three, four, five, looks like six valves in this one photograph here. Uh, these six do not include those other three, or wait a minute, one, two, three, four, five, zero, six. I count six. What do y'all count? But these three, or these six do not include those other three, so that's a total of nine so far. Uh, so there must have been quite a few on each side. Does anybody know? How many there were on each side? Put that in the comments if you do, I'd like to know. Now this piece of steel is interesting. Uh, don't know where it's from. It again is a beautiful piece of iron. It uh, has rivets in it along the back side. Now it is, it, it, this obviously bolted up against a, uh, a, another plate of some kind, maybe it that's the outer hole, so maybe that bolted up to the inner hole, but the inner hole is actually further away than that, so it didn't bolt up to the inner hole. Um, not sure what it riveted up to, but uh, it's got some beautiful rivets in it. It's a beautiful piece. Uh, there's a lot of rivets right here, you can see. The rivets are obviously original to the ship, and look at all these beautiful rivets. I mean, it's just beautiful, beautiful ironwork. Next photograph, you can see some of the foam that was put into the ship to help uh, keep the water out. It, a lot of people thought it was added in as ballast to help keep the ship afloat. And it was in a, in a way, I guess, but what it did more than anything else was take up volume in areas where the ship had leaks uh, and not allow, by taking up that volume, it didn't allow as much water to come into the ship. So that was a great idea, uh, whoever came up with the idea on the foundations end. That was a great idea uh, to keep her afloat. She got uh, down to the dry dock in much less time than what they expected and with zero issues, so, so far as we know, zero issues. And she cleared the dry dock. Uh, as many of you know, the when she was moved in 89, 90, 80, 89, 88, 89, 90, uh, she barely cleared the dark, uh, dry dock by six inches due to taking on so much water. So this, this was a, a great idea. Now here's a huge scrap pile. You can see that same foam right there. Uh, this piece of steel here, I, I don't know what that is. There's a valve right next to it. Uh, that is not one of the valves we've seen so far. So that gives us a total of 10 valves. So maybe there's five per side. Uh, once again, anybody who knows, let us know. This is a beautiful piece of steel, though. Uh, that, I would love to have. <laughs> I would love to have anything here. Uh, look at this one, though. What a gorgeous piece of steel that is. All the rivets, the inspection plate cover, beautiful. All right, that covers the scrap pile. 
and that was about two months ago. So look, look for my future videos. They will also be videos on the Battleship Texas, and I'll throw in some that are not related to the Battleship Texas as well, because I do uh, have interest in other areas as well. But uh, there's going to be some interesting ones coming up on the Battleship Texas. Like I said earlier, uh, there'll be videos that nobody else is doing, hopefully, unless they uh, have brainstorms like I did. And once again, if, if you want to see the battleship from drones uh, in dry dock or in her old uh, resting place, her old home, or during the move to dry dock, I've got videos up on all of that, as well as other people. So there's a plethora of those types of videos. I want to thank everybody for coming and watching this video. And like I said earlier, it's really great to be back making videos again. And I hope you guys will like this video, share this video, and subscribe. Appreciate it, folks. Y'all have a great day.